Hello everyone, this is Rajeshwari, Assistant Professor of English. Today we will learn a poem for New England. It's written by Judith Wright. Judith Wright was an Australian poet, environmentalist and campaigner for Aboriginal land rights. She was born in New South Wales and she was a recipient of the Christopher Brennan Award and the Australian National Living Treasure Award and she has won this award in 1998. Her first book of poetry was The Moving Image, which was published in 1946. Her other poetry collections are Woman to Man, The Gateway, The Two Fires, Birds, and Hunting Snake, etc. Her poems have been translated into several languages. Her works are noted for a keen observation on the Australian environment. She deals with the relationship between settlers, indigenous Australians and the bush culture along with other themes. The poem For New England is deeply concerned with the implications of belonging and homecoming. The poem focuses on sense of duality and Australia's history with the conflict and reconciliation between indigenous and non-indigenous Australians. Duality means the poem can be seen in two levels. Duality of Judith Wright's identity. She has a European heritage, but she has a deep love towards New England. She was a resident of Queensland for more than 30 years. She was born in New England it was a region in New South Wales and she has settled in Queensland at the very young age. Judith had a deep love to Australian landscape and she hated the devastation of that landscape by white Australians or the European Australians. European Australians or these white Australians are the citizens of residents of Australia whose ancestry originates from the people of Europe. Since the early 19th century, people of European descent have formed the vast majority of the population in Australia. Judith was an ardent supporter of the Aboriginal land rights movement. She has continued to fight both for the environment and for Aboriginal land rights until her death in June 2000 at the age of 85. Judith Wright has been called the conscience of the nation for her commitment towards the environment and Aboriginal land rights. The land was the primary source of her poetry. Judith Wright travelled to Europe in 1937. There, the poet found or she has experienced herself to be an outsider in Europe. Let's move on to the poem. Your trees... The homesick and the swarthy native blow all one way to me, the southern weather that smells of early snow. And I remember the house closed in with sycamore and chestnut, fighting the foreign wind. Here I will stay, she said, be done with the black north, the harsh horizon rimmed with drought. Planted the island there and drew it round her. Therefore I find in me the double tree. The poet's sense of duality has been portrayed throughout the images of trees. The poem refers to the speaker as a homesick traveller. The background and context of the poem reflects the conflicts and reconciliation between indigenous and non-indigenous Australians. The trees are homesick due to the European colonisation. Swathi native represents the Aboriginals or indigenous Australians. Here, either the Aboriginals are homesick due to migration to a new land or the settlers are homesick due to the displacement from their native country or the native land. She feels herself as a European as well as a native to Australia because already I told you that she has a European heritage but she has born in Australia. This weather 
takes her memory back. She recalls how the house or the land has been covered by sycamore and chestnut, then how it has been struggling to grow in a foreign land, in a new land. Chestnuts and sycamore are the European trees. Sycamore is a large maple tree. It's a native of southern Europe. And chestnut is also a large European tree. She determines to stay in Australia and fight for the sake of Aboriginals and Aboriginal Australians and the landscape. So she finds a sense of duality. Double tree tells about the poet's duality, identity. She is part of Europe and the part of Australian landscape. The poet feels connected to both landscapes, not only Europe, also Australia. Let's continue. And therefore, I deserted on the wharves, have watched the ships fan out their webs of streamers, thinking of how the lookout at the heads leaned out towards the dubious rims of sea to find a sail blown over like a message you are not forgotten or followed through the taproot of the poplar but look or oh look the gothic trees on fire with blonde gallus and fuming with wild wings the hard inquiring wind strikes to the bone and winds division she has been looking on the harbour and watching the ships. The people are spreading and moving to new places. But there will always be a connection through their past heritage and culture. It might be the refugees who are doubtfully waiting for the arrival of a ship to take them to a new land. Some others are moving to the northern region for their growth and development. Poplar is a tree and that represents northern region. Gothic tree is European and gallus are the small Australian birds. European colonization upon the Aboriginal Australians. The struggles of the Aboriginals or the natives to save their culture or tradition or their land. Their extreme anger and cry against the colonization also can be seen here. The conflict between settlers and aboriginals is also visible. Many roads meet here in me, the traveller and the ways I travel. All the hills gathered waters feed my seas, who am the swimmer and the mountain river, and the long slopes concurrence is my flesh, who am the gazer and the land I stare on. And dogwood blooms within my winter blood, an orchard's fruit in me, and need no season. But sullenly the jealous bonds recall what other earth is shaped and hoarded in them. The poet addressed herself as a traveller, then shows the significance of all landscapes. And we can see the duality of the poet also. She was both the swimmer and the mountain river. Her identity has been expressing through the landscape. She is a settler as well as a native. Or she is both an insider and the outsider. Duality is her identity. She looks the land with great curiosity. The memory of northern region blooms in her with affection. She feels happiness and joy with memories of her landscape. She also thinking about the other landscape which she loves, that is Europe. She wants to know about the European land and her love for landscape is explicit here. Where is home, Ulysses? Cacolded by lewd time, he never found again the girls he sailed from, but at his fireside met the islands waiting and died there twice a stranger. Wind blow through me till the nostalgic candles of laburnum fuse with the dogwood in a single flame. To touch alight these sapless memories, then will my land turn sweetly from the plough, and all my pastures rise as green as spring. There is a connection between the poet and Ulysses. 
he was the great traveller. When Ulysses returned to his country, Ithaca, things has been changed by time. She felt herself to be an outsider or a stranger in both places. So that's how she has become a stranger twice. Her sense of closeness or attachment with the landscape is visible here. The wind brings her feeling of nostalgia. All emotions of different landscape joined in her dry memories. Judithrite addresses the land which she loves. She wishes to get the landscape as fresh and new. And she expects a change from being an outsider to an insider of her land. The last line refers to the pleasure or happiness she has derived from the different environment she has experienced in her life. The landscape of New England inspired Judith Wright throughout her life. And she also portrays in this poem for New England all the other landscapes she has experienced, not only Australia. And here we have a few poetic devices in this poem. Examples of alliteration, fighting the foreign wind. Alliteration, as we all know, repetition of consonant sounds in a single line. The harsh horizon rimmed with drought. Then another example for metaphor. Therefore, I find in me the double tree. The double tree is the duality, the identity of Judith Wright. Examples of alliteration. But look, oh look, the gothic tree on fire. With blonde galas and fuming with wild winds. Many roads meet here in me, the traveller and the ways I travel. So here in this point we have many examples of alliteration. Another example of metaphor. Then will my land turn sweetly from the plough? Will that landscape, will her land, will turn as good as new? So she expects that will her land, the landscape, will it turn to be good? The last line we have an example of simile. And all my pastures rise as green as spring. So that's all. Hope you understood. Thanks for listening.